Alright guys, so today I'm going to go over Photo Mechanic, and if you don't know what that is, it's a very powerful program that a lot of uh, photojournalists will use. Um, it is an industry standard um, program. It's very nice. Uh, I'm going to go over the basics of it today in this video. This might be like a two or three part video, I'm not sure yet, but there's a few things I want to go over. And for this video, I'm just going to go over the basics and explain what it is and uh, how you can use it for the basics. So when it's opened up, uh, this one is Photo Mechanic 5. Um, you can get it for about, I think it's $150 or $100 or so, I'm not sure. Um, when you have it opened up, uh, what you can do is, you for Mac, you do Command-G. Oops. And I'm not sure what it is for Windows. I think it's like Control-G or I'm pretty sure it's Control-G. So for Mac, it's Command-G and you open up this uh, area called Ingest. And what you what ingesting is is basically you have an IPTC stationary pad, uh, which is right here, and it has all this preset information that's going to be applied to photos. Every photo that you ingest that's in a folder on your desktop or card or wherever you're going to be ingesting it because you can. Let me close this out. Right here, you're picking uh, where you are. What are you going to ingest? And for me, I have my first half folder on my desktop right here and my second half folder right here because I was shooting soccer so I had a first half, second half. If you have football you can do uh, first half, second half still. You just put the first two quarters into the first half and the uh, second and the third and fourth quarter in the second half folder. Uh, it's whatever whatever type of workflow you have you can you know arrange it yourself. This is just my workflow but this is how I think it works best. So I have first half, second half. After I dump my photos onto my computer um, I dump the first half photos uh, from the game I covered into the first half and then I click on that and then um, if you want to add one you just click add and then this will pop up and you just go to like desktop and then you can pick a folder you want to add in there but that's how you do that and you can remove one and what the IPTC stationary pad is like I said it's just preset information so for here I cover the USA versus South Korea game on February 1st so I have February and then in bracket day year city state country Dash, and then I have a air right here. This is in the first half during the game between USA and South Korea at the StubHub Center in City State, and then credit image Seth Sanchez Cal Sport Media. This is going to be applied. All this stuff right here, everything in this area is going to be applied to the photo. All the photos, each photo that I'm ingesting. So you can't obviously put a description of what's going on just yet because then that would be applied to every photo, and not every photo has the same person doing the same thing. So I have as much as I can preset already so I don't have to type this out for each photo. So I put the uh, month, the day, the year, the city, the state, and the country it's in and then a dash for what's going on in the image. So for example I would put if I'm shooting uh, US actually let me just do this first. So I have a capture time set for my camera so I make sure make sure if you do that your camera is set to the proper time, month, uh, and all that. Um, the city was in Carson, California, United States of America, down here, same thing. Uh, keywords that my job requires and then just things that had to do with what I was shooting. And then the headline is what my job requires it to be. Every job's different. And then description writer is my initials. Uh, come down here, you got your image rights. This is what they all want. Every job tells you to do it a specific way. So this is how they wanted me to do it. Uh, the category is SPO for sport for my job. And then for my job, SOC is for soccer. Uh, and usually, I think, I'm not sure if all jobs are like this, I'm pretty sure they do this. Uh, the subcap 2, they want you to, whoever you put, you, whoever you mention in the uh, caption area up, up top in here, if you mention someone's name, you need to put their name down here in brackets, and then a comma, space, and then another person's name if someone else is involved. I'll show that in detail in a second. So this is the sub, uh, the IPTC stationary pad. So let's close that. And let's add a folder. I have one on my desktop I specifically made for this video. So we're going to add the raw folder. Okay. And we're going to click ingest. And you can see it's loading all the files down over here in the bottom left. Once that's done, it loads all the images from the folder that you just selected. And if you highlight over one, it has this thing right here for rotating, and then vice versa on the side, and magnify, you can enlarge it. Um, it has all your settings right here. You can scroll down, there's cropping, there's zooming on the picture, 
all of that. Um, I don't really use this personally. It's just a preference. There's a lot of other things you can do. Um, little options up here. Um, you can just mess around with those. But what I do, and most jobs do, is they're really quick about it. You, they click I for info, and then here is your uh, caption and description writer, everything that you have. So now it's filled out. Um, you probably noticed that I put brackets and it said day, year, uh, city, state, or country and all that. I'll go over that in another video. Um, that's called um, uh, variables. Uh, it's just a quick shortcut and it'll like everything that's set for the day in the IPTC stationary pad, it'll, it'll apply it to the photos once they're ingested. It's just a shortcut. I'll go over that in another video. So in this photo, we've got this guy and he's warming up. You can see he's not wearing his normal jersey. Uh, he doesn't have a number. His number is actually on his leg. His uh, what leg is that? His left leg over there. It's but it's not noticeable. So what I did is when I shot it, I looked up and waited until I saw his number. And you can some cameras. I think it's just the 1D series and the uh, I don't sure for an icon. I think it's just the D4 and D3S and D3 and all those the top end ones. They have an option where you can talk into the camera and give you info. If you did talk into it, then they have this little section right here. You just hit play. And I said it was number nine. So, for example, I would say uh, right here I'd start and put, uh, let me see if this works still. Yeah, it does. Okay. South Korea forward, Kim Shin Wook, number nine. Uh, and then I would put what he's doing. Uh, warms up before the friendly game. And I'd delete this. Between the USA, between USA and South Korea at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. So all of that was done just like that, really fast. And if you you probably noticed, I did a little shortcut where I did a forward slash SK for South Korea, and he was number nine, and then forward slash again, and then it fills that out automatically. And that'll be um, I'll go over that in another video. It is a lifesaver. It's an amazing uh, program or not program. It's a online subscription called Code Replacements. Uh, I'll go over that in another video. It's very helpful. I don't know what I would do without it. So, like I said, we got right here, you got to put a caption in the description of each photo of what is going on in the photo, who's in it. So, we, like I said, this is number nine. So, we'd have to go down here and put his name in brackets, uh, but there's a shortcut for that too with code replacements. You do forward slash South Korea and then a K, an extra K always, and then a nine and a forward slash and it's in brackets. So you can see how much time that saves. And imagine all these, like especially South Korea teams, they've got really complex names and they've got, it's just very hard to remember how to type it out. And even if you've got a roster next to you, you got to make sure to double check because if one thing's wrong, then it's just, it's bad. You don't want to do that. It's bad on your part. So you can also either just hit okay and then go to the next photo. Uh, or you, when you're in here, you can just hit this little button, save and move to the next photo. And then you can go back if you want and just double check, move forward. Okay, in this photo, we've got number 22, I believe. Um, if you're ever not sure, uh, you can, if you have the 1D series or the D, uh, D4, D3S, D3 series, whatever the, that's called, you can talk into the camera once you see who it is. So we'll just say this is number 22. SK22 forward slash. Boom. Okay, so we can remove this warms up with warms up before the game between USA and South Korea and you just keep do you have to do this with each photo that you're sending um, so you can see why photo mechanic is such a powerful program it's very nice and it's just like I said the industry standard if when I when you go inside a media room everybody has photo mechanic and it's just if you learn how to use this and apply it to your job it's going to help you so much. Or even before you get a job, if you're trying to get a job, this this is what you would have to learn to use, and it will really benefit you in so many ways. So let's just do a recap here. Um, let's exit this out. Hold on. Okay. So you open up Phone Mechanic. Loads it on here. Uh, Command-G, I believe it's Control-G for uh, PC, and it takes you into the ingest. And you select. You can add or remove or whatever. You select what you want to ingest. Uh, you can select multiple ones if you want or just one 
and then you go into the IPTC stationary pad. Uh, like I said, you want to do this stuff beforehand. Um, get as much filled in as you can. Like all this is going to be all like all this will be the same. The only thing you're going to be changing on each photo is the actual description of who's in the photo. That's it. You're going to look at the photo and then identify who it is and what he's doing. And if there's multiple people, you got to explain what they're all doing. Whoever's involved in the photo. And then once you identify who's involved, then like I said, you have to come down to the subcap two. I believe this is for all jobs. For my job, Calsport Media, this is what they make me do. I'm pretty sure all the media outlets make you do this. Uh, you have to do S, K, K, let's say we mentioned number nine in the photo. And then a spa uh, if there's multiple people, a comma, space, forward slash, S, K, K, uh, 11. Okay, and another person, uh, let's just say US was involved, US, K, uh, two. There you go. And that's what you would do, and then you would move on to the next photo. So every time you mention somebody, you have to come down to the subcap 2 and put it their names in brackets. Code Replacements does a shortcut where you do a forward slash US and then add the K and then the number of the player. And then it does brackets. If I didn't do the K, it would be US 2 no K. Then it would put that. That would be used for the actual caption up top. So this is pretty much just a you know, a quick highlight over the program. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to it, I think. Uh, I mean, for my job, that's pretty much what I do. It's pretty straightforward like that. I've seen some people, uh, you know, get a lot deeper into the program, but in a nutshell, this is what it's for. This is what it does. This is what it's capable of doing. Again, um, you pick the folder, you can add it, remove it. You go to IPTC stationary pad, make sure everything's right. Generally, you do that before game. Uh, and then once you're done, you would hit ingest and then it would ingest all the pictures. Uh, now it's got double because I ingested it twice. Um, but yeah, and then once uh, you're done, uh, generally what people do is they'll use the uh, arrow keys and then just uh, hit T, and then you can see there's a check mark uh, being applied to the photo down there on the bottom right. Oops, I just did a shortcut. Uh, if you hit Command E in the photo mechanic, and then I think Control E for PC, it'll bring all the images over into Photoshop, which is part of my workflow too, because once you're done selecting the images and you're tagging them, let's say we tag these, okay. And then we go up here and hit tagged, and then just the ones that we selected will be will show up. Um, and then once you're done captioning each one properly, then you would highlight all the ones in the tag section by doing like Command A or Control A, and then you just hit Command E, and it would ask you if you really want to edit all these, and then boom, brings you over in uh, Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. And then you would edit those and crop them and then send them over to your uh, your uh, company, who you're working for. Um, so that's the basics of Photo Mechanic. Um, if you guys have any questions or if I miss something really basic, uh, I'm sorry, just go ahead and ask. Uh, feel free to comment. Um, and yeah, I really hope this helped you guys out. Um, I'll go over the variables in another video for like a part two and then coder placements which is really big in part three thanks guys